Irish American girl, a prodigy on the violin, discovers that she is part fae, and this is the culmination of that story. But this is from a different character standpoint. His name is Ai, and he is one of the uh, messengers of Gavnu, who is the ruler of Tir Namar. Coming before Gavnu was never a comfortable prospect. As his messenger, it generally involved gaining a new responsibility, rarely something pleasant or simple. This time Ai arrived at the Temple of the Fallen, as instructed, only to find Kara there and the smith god nowhere in sight. Gavnu, I'm on my way, his liege answered. I sighed inwardly. Kara was agitated on so many levels, and his presence only seemed to add to her troubled state. Even if his gift had allowed him to read thoughts, he feared he would not have made sense of the maelstrom surely spinning in her head. The emotional barrage was hard enough to decipher. His attempt to keep his distance was unsuccessful. For a moment it seemed an argument would spark between them, but his mention of Gavnu motivated her to leave. Though that had not been his intention, he was relieved when she went away. When she was well gone, a form stepped from the foliage, not far from the path. It was Gavnu, a sword belt slung across his shoulder and a deep pouch hanging at his side. I didn't want to disturb her further, he explained, though he had no need to. She's burdened, Ai said, equally unnecessarily. But oh, what, I cannot say. They moved towards the monument, standing several feet away, heads bowed respectfully. From the air, in a wisp of magic, Gavnu drew a smattering of snowflakes and cast them across the slab like a bejeweled blanket. Tribute observed, the smith got turned <coughs> toward him, his features dark and fierce, eyes smoldering like the embers of his forge. We cannot lose so many with no hope of gaining them back. The Namid took five from the battle. We must find them before we're forever diminished and the enemy built up. Ayi's expression went grim at the harsh facts. Thanks to Kara, they had learned that the Nam had dwelt their young in the carcasses of magical beings. Suspended, a breath from dying, the victim cradled the monsters who slowly devoured the soul, leaving nothing to return to the people. That very concept alone marked the misanthema. What would you have of me? I asked, knowing what he would hear, poised and ready, even eager. Will you serve as Hound again? Dropping to one knee, Ayi brought his right fist across his chest and bowed his head. Unleash me on the Namid, and I'll tear their throats out with my teeth. Ayi remained where he was until the smith guy drew him up. I would have served just as well. Maybe, Ayi said, but it wouldn't have done justice to the oath. With a nod, Gavnu turned back to the monument before speaking. Then tis time to set your prey. With a frown, Ayi turned his gaze to his liege. How? He was not sure he wanted an answer. If they knew where to find them, the point would be moot. Besides, his brief experience with the Nam had already filled him with distaste. Still, when needs must. Time has no place in Tir Nanam. We're the masters here, Gavnu answered. So come, let's see what time will hide from us. Ayi laid his hand on Gavnu's shoulder and followed as the smith god stepped between the layers of memory to the point before the Nile, when the monument had yet to be cleansed. The first thing to strike Ayi was the stench of decay rotting leaves, rotting flesh, mildew and mold, and the earthy sense of suffering. Blanking it all was a heavy, sickly sweet musk, unfamiliar and cloying. Despite his disgust, Ayi drew the scent in and printed in his mind. Though his empathic gift, he felt Myrna's soul, in frantic torment, nearly overwhelmed by an alien hunger. His heart shredded in that brief moment of immersion. His fingers tightened on Gavnu's shoulder in reaction. The sensory impact threatened to leave his legs weak and forced with the force of it all. He stored this sensation as well until he could stand no more. Enough, he begged unabashedly, soul to soul. The smith god stepped back and layers of insulated memory rose between Ayi and the horror carried cleansed. <laughs>